I was a ward of the state, so I emancipated myself at uh, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and being a ward of the state is when I was first introduced to therapy. Counseling was mandatory weekly, and it wasn't a pleasant experience. Um, I could have been a stubborn kid from the projects, but now as a therapist, I know it wasn't a pleasant experience because of uh, cultural reasons, you know, cultural competency. So the therapist at that time was, it was different ones, but they were all Caucasian or either Asian or, you know, they were, you know, older age. So not only the ethnicity, but the age factor and the style factor wasn't there it's for us to build a cohesive bond and unit, um, which is different than what I do in therapy today. Welcome everyone to another episode of Meta Transitions. Uh, Today we have with us uh, James Harris. James resides in Chesterfield, Virginia. He has a daughter named Peyton. Uh, James is a military veteran who has served eight years and two deployments, one each to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, James is a licensed mental health professional. And after completing graduate school and obtaining a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling, James has founded the movement called Men to Heal. We are so happy to have James with us. Um, welcome, James. Hey, definitely appreciate you for having me. I like your platform and I'm happy to see all the wonderful things that you're doing for the people. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. All right, so we're just going to go right into it, James. Um, Share with us a little bit about your story. I mean, my story is an interesting one from, you know, uh, being a father, being a veteran, being an entrepreneur, um, and of course, a a Black male therapist within society today. Um, But, you know, like everything, it didn't start out so grand. Um, I was a ward of the state, so I emancipated myself at uh, 16 years old. and being a ward of the state is when I was first introduced to therapy. And it was also when I was first introduced to, I guess, being like free of wanting to be free, wanting to obtain my own and stuff like that. Um, so as a ward of the state, counseling was mandatory weekly. Uh, yeah. And it wasn't a pleasant experience. Um, I could have been a stubborn kid from the projects. But now as a therapist, I know it wasn't a pleasant experience because of uh, cultural reasons, you know, Mm -hmm. cultural competency. So the therapist at that time was, it was different ones, but they were all Caucasian or either Asian or, you know, they were, you know, older age. So Mm -hmm. not only the ethnicity, but the age factor and the style factor wasn't there for us to build a cohesive bond and unit, um, which is different than what I do in therapy today, taking those experiences. Um, And then, you know, just fast forward and uh, many years later joined the Army, realized that I was different after my deployments. I tried therapy again. Uh, This time it was, you know, woman therapist um, and no deployment uh, experience, no military experience. And I found myself again um, in a tough spot, knowing that therapy worked, but not obtaining what I needed to obtain to benefit from therapy. Yes. Um, and, and that's the reason why a lot of veterans tend to go to groups as well, opposed to um, taking therapy. You know, we got that mm-hmm. shared experience, those common bonds and stuff like that. So a transition period for me was like, yo, let me pause entrepreneurship. Let me go back, do what I have to do to become a licensed therapist. And that's pretty yeah. much what I did. Um, just so I can know, I know what it's like to be that young kid um, and, and you know, to, to provide to a young kid or provide to men, uh, which is what my movement is, and to provide for people who look like me from those demographics of, of, of or culture, uh, whether it's the age factor, the style factor, or just the ethnicity factor, you know, and a lot of men are reluctant to receive services. So I just want to break all those barriers. And so opposed to talking, I just pretty much did the work. Here we are. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. It's great that you're out there, you know, advocating for, you know, mental health services for men specifically. And I think what I'm hearing there is, you know, you you looked at your own experience and what you had to go through as a black male who was a word of the state um, and created something that, you know, can uh, there's a platform 
for, you know, under a underdeserved youth, uh, black youth, you know, and men specifically who've gone through trauma or, you know, as a veteran as well and can identify with maybe what you've gone through uh, to be able to find healing. So thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, no, I appreciate you. Definitely appreciate you. But yeah, those collective experiences um, led me here, you know, now as a father, um, as you can see, I'm in my shoe closet because my mm-hmm. daughter is on virtual school and stuff. So like for me, it's more about giving back, more about setting an example, being a, a model, um, not only for my daughters, but for society itself. Just being a person of, of a certain character, of a certain drive and initiative, because, you know, I want people to look at my experiences and say, all right, cool, I can see something that's obtainable. I can reach to the next level. Um, and that's what it's all about. So I'm just fortunate enough to be able to, you know, have a platform and grow it from the bottom up and, and help many, many people, not just men. Um, of course, I see women, um, couples as well, uh, mm-hmm. but mostly men um, to mend these families, to, to heal the brokenness and the reluctancy issue of seeking services for their overall wellness, whether that's mental health or just physical health. Um, and it has led to great opportunities, whether I'm speaking all over the country, um, different countries. And of course, my book is doing real well and my YouTube mm-hmm. channel has, has grown um, as a result of that. So I'm just fortunate enough to be in a position to be able to provide and serve. Wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, it sounds like you're a grassroots person. So a person who's also giving back to your community. And I, you know, sort of read in your introduction there, you know, an organization that you founded that's providing sort of physical, you know, health and mental health services to, you know, the Richmond community, which is great. Um, Tell me a little bit more about that organization and how that started. Yeah, so I got a spot here in Richmond, um, one of my many spots. So entrepreneurship is, again, where I was started at. Um, but one of my spots is an art gallery. Then I got a waffle spot. Then I got some properties and other stuff. But this spot that you're talking about is called the Healing Hub. Mm-hmm. And it's a holistic place. You know, I do my outpatient there. Um, pre-pandemic, I was doing seminars, bringing in different speakers for the community on uh, first-time home buying, credit repair, mm-hmm. debt restoration. Um, restoration of rights, um, LGBTQ seminar educations and stuff like that. Of course, uh, yoga, math, and Zumba, Reiki, um, just holistic uh, wraparound services for the community. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, so I I wasn't in a position to wait for somebody to to give or to, um, you know, I didn't want the community to continue to suffer. So I just pulled together my resources and made sure that they had Um, what they need of course is a different approach now that the pandemic is here but you know pre-pandemic those are some of the things that we were doing we were feeling less fortunate uh every third Saturday as well you know giving away clothes foods and um toiletries and stuff like that so it was a pleasant experience the community loved it um still active just a little bit different based on the pandemic Yes, yes, definitely. I, I, you know, I, I can hear in you that true spirit of altruism, right? Wanting to give back, wanting to provide these services to the community um, and, you know, wanting to do that from a pure heart. And, you know, it's great that we have individuals like you within, you know, our community that's willing to, you know, to sort of give up yourself and, and provide these services because it's definitely needed, especially, you know, last year when we, you know, the whole thing with the death of George Floyd, and we had to pull together as a community to, you know, um, rally around everybody, because, you know, even though I'm here in Canada, I felt it, right, just watching it and seeing it, and I can't imagine, you know, how many, how much services you had to provide there um, in your little community when that happened. Sure, so, um, like, based on my platform and my movement, I've always had a waiting list, but other therapists now has an extensive waiting list too, just based on those events that uh, transpired, you know, last year. And of course, due to COVID situation, um, you know, just plagued our community because of the unresolved trauma, the unresolved grief and stuff like that. Um, and it is going to be a lasting effect, of course, from the results of this COVID situation. So those two pandemics in itself has been an issue for a long time, but now, um, it's more in the forefront, just based on, of course, social media and the prevalence of where we are as far as people getting help and services. So mm-hmm. 
I'm just happy that I'm in a position to be, um, I guess, in this position to be able to refer different people from all over the world, you know, especially with right here in my backyard mm-hmm. um, to different services, whether they are just wanting to do, you know, just to talk to somebody just to see, you know, because they had a troubled day or because they're easily agitated and frustrated because they are African-American man or, you know, that mom or those parents who have a teenage son, they just want to ensure that everything, you know, can be, reduce as far as his anxiety and stuff like that so I'm just in a good position and um and my book has been a a useful tool for couples as well so Mm -hmm. many wives has been uh you know leaving reviews or sending emails and stuff saying that it's been a helpful tool uh within our marriage it's the first time that you know husbands has opened up based on certain information so I'm just fortunate enough to be able to put these things together and um assist the masses and for that reason a lot of people all over the world has been reaching out and that's why I started a YouTube channel so different people in different places can you know uh, obtain information as well you know via my website or YouTube or purchasing the book or uh, social media and stuff like that. Definitely. I, I can see, you know, how active you are on your Instagram page, which is where I found you. And I'm very happy to have connected with you because, you know, I really think that um, your platform is important, especially, you know, putting out that positive message for men, helping them to recognize that healing is possible. And then, you know, as you talk about this, inter- the interaction between, you know, um, couples, right? So, uh, man op- opening up, men opening up to express themselves, you know, is something that is generally taboo, right, in our society. It's a st- stigma attached to this idea of if you open up and you talk about your emotions, it's a weakness, right? Um, so I'm glad that, you know, you have your platform and you're sharing that, you know, that's a power. It's something that, you know, by being able to talk about that, you, you, you know, you're opening yourself up to be able to connect with other people and, and, and create relationships. Um, so that's great. Yeah. So that vulnerability piece has definitely been um, a hindrance within our demographic, within our community for such a long time. So um, what my book does is break down so many different characteristics. Um, it's called Man Just Express Yourself. And it's Amazon, Barnes and Noble's Target. And of course my website, but some of the topics that are, like key topics to assisting not only the man, but the, the young man, the, the athlete, the, the parents, you know, um, and of course those couples, you know, you got affirmations, goals, traumas, mood, abandonment, grief, anger, mm-hmm. uh, manhood, resilience, conflict, stress, um, peer pressure, leadership, tough love, mentality, communication, insecurities, boys mm-hmm. be boys, um, mm-hmm. conflict resolution, misogyny. Um, and, and those things itself aren't normally talked about or discussed, especially within relationships. And that they are, the woman or the partner is oftentimes met with resistance because that man is unable to articulate it. Yeah. So what my book does is make it an easier way that they can, you know, exchange dialogue over a date night. Or it's a tool that the 12-year-old boy can... Uh, grow with you know he can check back in six months to see if he's still triggered by the same things or yeah. see if he still need to work on certain areas and stuff like that so just the movement and the book and everything else has been um, a phenomenal tool for for people I'm just fortunate yes yes definitely definitely all right so now that you sort of showcased you know the services you offer the products that you have right i wanted to know you know are there any tips that you can leave for you know again our demographic black men out there even men in general that may be going through something traumatic or just need to sort of heal from something is there any are there any tips that you can share um, with them uh, so they can you know feel empowered Sure. So one of my favorite uh, sayings or quotes or just things that I I tend to live by, um, especially for my men, is uh, feel your feelings, you know, because oftentimes men don't feel their feelings um, unless it's those good ones. Right. We want to process all of those feelings um, in in healthy ways, I should say, you know, because more than likely when they're feeling those feelings, the good ones or the bad ones is either a result of reckless behavior, being promiscuous or, you know, anger issues and stuff like that. So we want to feel them 
in positive ways to process. And we also want to ensure that we're ignoring the perception of others, like be true and authentic to yourself. Um, and that's your only matter. You know, you should live in a way that is true and authentic to you outside of the perception of others, because people are going to want you to be who they want you to be, and you're going to be drowning yourself out. So ensure that you're living for you um, in a way that you are your true self. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Such good tips to live by, right? That idea of feeling your feelings and acknowledging them and recognizing that they're there and it's, and knowing that it's okay, right? Um, and then sort of that idea of making sure that you're being authentic and genuine, you know, with who you are. And that, that plays so much into, you know, couple relationships and even relationships with other people, right? Because if you're genuine yeah. and you're feeling your feelings, then you have a place to start from. Uh, and then you can share from there. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing with us today. Um, one last question. We love our you know, viewers to be able to connect with our guests. Um, if you could share you know, uh, some of your uh, social media handles or your email or what, how, what, what are ways that um, our guests can connect with you if they wanted to purchase some nice swag from you or you know, get your book. Sure. Again, definitely thank you for having me, especially all the way in Canada. Yeah. Um, I'm here in Richmond, Virginia, and it's the weather's kind of nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, I definitely appreciate you guys for reaching out. And uh, to reach me, the easier way is probably through my website, www.mentoheal.com, M-E-N-T-O-H-E-A-L.com. Um, mm -hmm. And from there, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can purchase my book. You can uh, send me an email or, and um, you can uh, pretty much do everything, my Instagram and all that. So go to my website, it's easier. Of course, you got the YouTube, you got the book, you got the email, um, all of that. So I definitely appreciate you guys. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I will be putting all that information uh, for James in the description below. Uh, so thank you so much for being, being with us, James. And thank you all for watching. Until next time, take care. Thank you.